Oh, it's y'all. What's up, man? Welcome. My name is Jay Cole, Jermaine Cole, and welcome to my house. This is 2014 Forest Hills Drive, Fayetteville, North Carolina, 28303. This is the first house I ever owned in my life, and it just happens to be the last house I grew up in. Y'all gotta pardon the fact that the crib is empty. My goal and my intention uh, is some family will get to move into this place very close to rent-free, um, and we'll give them two years. Every two years, a new family will move in, and hopefully, by the time they leave, they'll be in a much better position than they were when they came. The reason why I'm doing that is because I remember what it felt like for us coming from Lewis Street, which is about a mile away, which was me and my brother sharing a room in this tiny crib, and my mom telling us we were moving and coming in here for the first time and being like, damn, like we got it upstairs. I got my own room. Follow me upstairs. All right, this is my room, as you can see. This is the only room that we did redo, and I try to get it as accurate as possible. Messy, clean my room, this is all I do. Just yeah. uh, enough to not get my ass whooped and <laughs> make, like, make it look like I did something. It's right next door to my parents' room, and the walls is mad thin. So any type of late night conversations past 11, 30, 12, you gotta be because the minute you start putting some bass in your voice, stepdad gonna get up out of sleep. Hey, little nigga. <laughs> me and my brother shared a room. And when we got here, this gave me the ability to close the door. When I got my own room, I could do things like zone out to the music I wanted to hear. I could do things like rap in front of the mirror and nobody's looking and I don't feel crazy. I could do things like sit in my own thoughts and write my raps and that's when I became way more introspective. This is where I started dreaming the dream. I used to sit in front of this thing right here, or something like this, and just play all my CDs. I remember the first time, oh, tapes too. Ah, I remember, uh, this reminds me of this dude, this white dude in high school named Jack Baldwin. Wherever you at, man, what's up? He gave me a dub tape of the roots, things fall apart. And I remember coming home and putting it in this tape player. I'm just being like, oh. After I fell in love with rap, I started to respect the craft of it. And I really started to idolize the rappers. I would also go through the magazines and cut out every picture and then go through the ones I wanted and put them up on my wall. Boom. Bomb Shelter. This the, the best group to come out of Fayetteville, man. These, these dudes is legends. So I just used to hit these dudes up every day. They never responded to me. They thought I was trying to hack their computer. They didn't know how to use AOL. But one day he finally hit me back, told me they was doing a show at the Skate Zone. They had a little section in their show where they let people come up and rhyme from the crowd. And at 14 years old, at a show with nothing but like 20, 21 year olds, 24 year olds, I'm five foot seven, squeaky voice. I hopped up on the stage and murdered. And ain't nobody expect that. So. After that, they let me start coming through to their studio. And then from there, I saw, man, he had an MPC, he had a four track recorder. Once I saw he had a beat machine, I begged my mom every day for a beat machine. Every day for like a year and a half. And when I was 15, she made it happen. And she got this thing right here. It's my very first beat machine. Now, I know y'all use Fruity Loops. I'm on Logic. Some of y'all use Ableton. Nobody's using analog things anymore, but this was the first thing in like the year 2000. It's a sampler, it don't come with barely no sounds, and I had to figure out how to use this. And that's when I started making my own beats, writing my own songs. It all started on this machine right here. So I got a composition notebook. I know a lot of people see this and think school, but as a rapper, you know, I see this and I think rhymes. My first raps was actually like No Limit Master P rap. I'm a motherfucking soldier, I'm smoking on that doge. I wasn't smoking that. <laughs> I was like 12, 13, but those were my first rap. And then I moved into like more like battle raps. Like I'm better than you, I can rap better than you. And then when I turned 15 is when I started telling stories. And I just got way more advanced with the storytelling and concepts. And I learned that songs was way more important than the battle raps. It was cool to have that. You always gotta be sharp on your pen, but if you can rap your ass off and you can't make a song, then it's like, I'm, I'm not trying to listen. So that's what these remind me of, those days. This room gave me the audacity to go to New York City to chase this dream. And I did all of that, and, and by the grace of God, made it happen and got this far, and I got farther to go. But I did all of that just to learn the things I used to think was important. I'm learning weren't what's important. 
all that shit y'all see on TV, all that jewelry niggas be wearing, all the bottles they be popping, it's not, no, it's temporary. The love was important, the love I had for the music, the love I had for rapping, the love I had when I made my very first song, that feeling I got, that was important. The love that was in this house amongst my family, my brother, my mother, the people that really love you, the forever authentic love is in places like this. So that's what buying this house represented for me. It was validation, you know what I mean? It was vindication for them foreclosing this place for my mom. And it was also just, just a symbol for me of like, okay, I, I know what's important. You can't run from home. <laughs>